guys, welcome to today's Massanutten Moment. My name is Jessie Shelburne, I'm from the Activities Department at Massanutten Resort, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do one of my absolute favorite activities, which is how to paint a landscape. I'm gonna walk you guys through this step by step. Painting is one of my favorite activities to do, either outside or inside, so I'm gonna show you guys what tools I use to recreate this painting. Materials that you will need when you are learning to paint do not have to be extremely expensive. For the canvas for today, I am going to be using an old wine and paint canvas. I already repainted it white. It wasn't my favorite picture, so I'm happy to recycle it. But you can also use things around your house like cardboard, pieces of wood, rocks outside. So you can really get creative with your painting surface. Palettes also do not need to be very expensive. I am using just some cheap paper plate. Another misconception is you need to spend a lot of money on paint. And I like to encourage people, especially while they are learning, I just have some nice cheap student grade paint you can get on any art store. It doesn't have to be very expensive. And that's what I'm going to be using today. For paint brushes, there are all sorts. I recommend scavenging and seeing what you have. I'm gonna be using kind of an odd assortment of brushes. We'll pop a photo of them up close on the screen with some labels, but see what you have around your house. Can you cut down a bigger brush? What kind of marks will a sponge make? You can really get creative like that. Uh, and the very last thing I'm going to be using is just an old jar of water. I think this had olives in it at one point. Cleaned it out and I am ready to make some art. Okay guys, uh, once you are ready to get started, my best tip for painting landscapes is to start as far, far, far away from yourself as possible and then the whole painting, just kind of work your way closer and closer and closer to the foreground. So that being said, at least uh, in most landscapes, uh, the furthest thing away is the sky. So that's where I'm going to start. Now I decided to go for a bit of a sunrise theme and I ended up choosing uh, blue and pink. This is actually the phthalo blue and the magenta. Um, I'm gonna start with the pink. So I'm gonna take a little bit of it and I have my biggest brush here and I'm gonna stir it into the white because both of these colors are quite dark and I'm looking for more of a light sky pink. So after I have it kind of the way that I like it, uh, I'm just gonna go for it. Uh, my plan is to do about um, the top half or so of my canvas as my sky. And I'm just gonna add a little bit more. You can see I'm not stirring it too much. That's because I kind of like the streaky look which is not a right or wrong, because if you sit and stir and stir your paint, it'll come out all as one tone, and that actually can be very beautiful as well. And I do encourage people right here at the beginning, make sure you get these edges, because it is very difficult to go back and match these exact colors later. And so I wanna make sure that I take it all the way off both edges. And you can see that I also like to use a lot of paint. I like to use enough paint that it feels nice. Now, I like that. So what I'm gonna do next is actually start to introduce a little bit of the blue. I do like to work a little quickly because this is acrylic and it will start to dry ahead of you. So what I'm gonna do is actually just use this same brush. Part of the reason I chose pink and blue is because if you're a beginner, it's actually a very easy color combination because what happens if you mix them together, you might get some shades of purple. So it's a easy way to learn to start. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of this blue cause it's super dark and I'm just gonna mix it right into this pink and white puddle. And then I'm just gonna keep going. You will find that the more and more you rub at the line where the colors are meeting, the softer it will become. I see a lot of people struggle, but you know, watch that I do these long, smooth lines. and I make sure I take it all the way off either edge. And 
and I'm gonna keep adding a little bit more blue. I'm gonna make it bluer and bluer and eventually take it all the way off the page. But I'm gonna take some more, stir it right into the same puddle, and then continue my way up. Next thing, working back to front, is the mountains. That's going to be the first piece of the ground space that we are going to see. Now, mountains can be any sorts of colors. I actually decided to go with a bit of teal, so I'm going to use some blue. I'm also going to use some green. I just grabbed a little bit of phthalo green and white because I want these to be lighter. I want them to look like they're far away and kind of fading and becoming very atmospheric. So this is mostly blue, some green, and also some white. Okay, now the trick with painting mountains is you want them all to be very unique. So I'm using my angle brush here, actually, but although, like I said earlier, a nice flat brush would work as well. But I do want all my mountains to be different from one another is something I'm looking for. I want them to be organic and peak and flow in their own unique way. So that's what I'm trying to capture. But I am creating this, this ridge, this ridge line of mountains, mostly blue because of I'm in the Blue Ridge of Virginia here. And I kind of take that all the way across the page. I change one here or there. All right. And once you like it, add a little nugget over there, I'm gonna fill it in. Now I see artists fill their mountains in in all sorts of different ways, and honestly, I do not think one way is better than another. Sometimes I see people dab at it, they'll stipple it where they sit here and uh, bump it up and down, and that actually can be a very effective method. Sometimes I see artists just take it in one direction. That actually can be very nice too. It can give it the idea that there's this very powerful light hitting it. Uh, as you can see personally, uh, my style is a little random. I just kind of fill it in in different striations. My next thing I'm going to throw in is the river and I'm going to use this same soft angle brush or a soft flat brush that would be fine. Anything that's not dropping too many bristles in your art. I'm going to use mostly blue and white for my river uh, but at the same time what color is rivers? They reflect whatever's around them so because I have a lot of this pink in the sky I'll probably end up throwing some pink in the water. Now a nice Thing to remember is that the river is going to start very small up here and it's going to get wider and wider and wider as it drops down the canvas. So I'm going to come up here and decide where I'm going to start it. I'm actually going to start it kind of between these little mountain crevices over here. And on my plate I'm just picking up some blue, picking up some white. There's still a little bit of this dirty green in my brush, but I don't mind that either. Rivers are often green. But you can see I'm just starting to do these little tiny striations and mostly blue and white. And I'm gonna let it kind of move this way and then I might start taking it back the other direction. But I always try to recommend to people, it's natural to want to drag your brush downward because we know this river is running down. But I just sit here and do these little striations because I'm trying to capture the ripples on top of the water. So up next, I'm going to move on to the grass. Now, my favorite brush to do grass is actually a fan brush because this kind of messy, stiff brush can actually do a lot of the hard work for you. Uh, at the same time, if you don't have something like that, just find like an old, stiff brush. Like, give it to some kids for a while and take it back because an old, stiff brush is actually gonna have this kind of texture which, um, which will shoot out this kind of natural grassy texture. And actually, I'm gonna use this brush later for the trees. I, I really like it. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna use the fan brush. 
And I'm gonna use three colors. I have my phthalo green, I have some yellow, and also some white. Phthalo green in particular is actually a very natural teal. So in order to get it to be more of like a spring green, like I'm going for, like a chilly spring morning, um, it actually does need some yellow. So I'm gonna pick up some green, pick up some yellow, pick up some white, dab at it. But you can actually see there's all the different colors across the bristles of the brush. And I like that. And then what I'm gonna do is just start my grass all the way in the back and then begin to move my way closer and closer and closer to the foreground. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just correct uh, kind of where the mountains are ending. So I'm gonna start to create this very far away distant hill. I like it to go slightly up and slightly down and I bring it all the way to the river. Now I do not worry too much if I get any grass in my river because Grass grows wherever it wants to, so. And I'm gonna take that all the way across. And then I'll do it again. This time I might do a slightly darker green, but it's still the green, yellow, and white. It's just a slightly darker or lighter version, and I'm not afraid to switch greens. It can look really cool. It can look like little shadows in your hill. I tell people, think about it like you are painting a typewriter. I'm gonna, liter I'm gonna just literally sit here and just go back and forth all the way across until I get to the bottom. Uh, that can take a little while. So enjoy your tapping and I've got an angle brush here. This is the messy old brush I was talking about earlier uh, in comparison to the fan brush, but I'm actually gonna use this to throw in my first layer of trees. Now, because my grass that I have painted is such a light, soft green, I know that I need to go for a darker green. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I did add a little bit of Mars black to my plate, but these trees are gonna be mostly dark green, mostly green, a little bit of black, and I'm still gonna use a little bit of that yellow too. And kind of the same with the fan brush. What I'm gonna do is start to tap out these little forests. And they can be anywhere I want. The further they are back, the smaller they will be. But I do need it to be a little bit darker just to achieve that contrast that I am looking for but I'm trying to keep it as organic as possible, move up and down. And let's see, I'll throw some more over here. Super organic. I still like to get the touches of lighter bits, darker bits, and I'm not too afraid. Like if that little spot goes too dark, actually I, I kind of like it. I can always go back and add some more green if I decide I need to tone that down some. You can have as many or as few trees in your world as you want. It's not a right or wrong. I'm gonna add some few little tree patches back here. Okay. Now that I have my little trees way off in the distance, I am gonna add some focal point cherry blossoms down here in the foreground in honor of spring, at least here in Virginia, all the cherry blossoms are starting to bloom, but I'm sure that's uh, true for a lot of us here in the Northern Hemisphere at least. So I have two colors to do my tree trunks. I have uh, what is called burnt sienna, which is kind of like a milk chocolatey brown. I always stir a little bit of black in mine because I actually prefer more of a dark chocolate kind of brown, but it's not a right or wrong. You should get a brown color that you like the look of. Um, and kind of the general rule is uh, to start somewhere down in the grass and just let your tree start to grow up. I do encourage people to have most or all of their branches kind of reaching up and towards the light because otherwise they might look a little sad. I'm going for more of a happy scene here. Don't want them to look like a 
like a broken tree out here, a broken cactus. So I like them to all reach up and towards the light. You can see they're not too big, not too detailed, but very important, same as the mountains. I want them all to be unique. That is what is important to me. And you can have as many or as few as you want. I'm gonna breeze through and add a few more. Okay, next thing I am going to do is to actually take the forest brush that I was using in the previous step, whatever I was still have green. And I like to put a little bit of one of my darker tree greens kind of down here underneath each little tiny tree that I'm working on. This is a subtle step, but it can really give them a bit of shadow, uh, make them a little feel a little heavier on the bottom. And so subtle detail, but I like to always throw that in. Okay, and I'm actually gonna use this same brush to do my leaves. So I'm gonna clean it off here in my water. As I said, I have my messy brush. I have decided to go with cherry blossom, so I'm gonna use the magenta and also some white. And very similar to all the other grass or trees, all the foliage we have done, I am going to tap. And I'll show you how I do one. I'm just gonna go with this pink and white and just start to tap out these new trees up front. I like the different color pinks to show lighter pinks, darker pinks. All right. And then on each tree, I always add a little touch of the petals down here. So they fall in. Now that I have my little trees the way that I like them. I am gonna take the same brush while I'm at it. I like to add a little bit of just drama down here. I added a little bit of darker grass and now I've got the pink again, adding some flowers. But what I really like the idea of is bringing a little bit of this pink from the sky all the way down to the bottom of the page. Okay, you can see I threw in a moon. Probably doesn't look super round to you at that angle, but it looks pretty good. You can also trace a quarter or something if you need to. And then I just filled it in with a little round, small brush. Uh, I do like to mix a bit of a gray. This is a really subtle step, but one thing I like to do is add, and I dab it actually, I dab this little gray kind of in like a little half circle. And the reason I dab it is because at least to me, it gives it kind of the idea of craters. The moon can look very cratery. Now, if it gets a little too dark, which actually I think this is a little dark for my taste, I just pick up some more white on the same brush and dab back over it. And it's gonna lighten and lighten it until I am satisfied. I don't want it to be totally gray because I do want it to be a light source, but I do like those craters in there. Okay, so last step, another optional step. I'm going to take a clean brush and actually some water. And I am just using this little bit of extra white I have. And I'm gonna make it super watery because I'm going to splatter some stars. Now, if you're inside and splattering is not an option uh, and be wary if you're inside, a toothpick can work really nice. You can sit there and very nicely dab some stars on your work. And after I have a very wet, watery white, I just take my finger and dab it. You have to be a little more okay with unpredictability because I'll probably get some stars down in my, you know, grass or in my mountains. So if you're looking for more control, a toothpick can actually work really nice. Or if you have a very petite brush, you can use the back of a brush. That's also a really cool trick. All right. 
So I feel like I'm about done. I might add a few more pink flowers down here in this area, maybe a few under the water line. And last and last but not least, very important, uh, always sign your work and put the year on it. Um, it's a very important part of art making. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and learned some tips and tricks to be creative and learn to paint your own painting that you can do at home with whatever you have and we hope you enjoyed the video. And when you come back to Massanutten, be sure to check out our art studio programs. We have wine and paint classes, landscape painting tutorials of course, as well as our painting workshop where you can actually work on whatever you like and kind of do your own thing. So thanks for checking out the video and we hope you stay safe. Be sure to wash your hands and have a great day. Be nice to wait for a deer. <laughs> okay, I got it. <laughs> I feel like a robot. <clears throat> All right, that wasn't a good one. I'm hungry. Okay, okay guys. Okay. Stop laughing at the beep. I, I laugh at everything. It's a problem. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. Are you recording? Yep. Oh, okay.